Hello and welcome to the first of a series of videos introducing the SPSS software. Many students fear SPSS and wish they could embark on a qualitative study instead. The reason is that SPSS conjures up complex formulae to understand charts that are probably difficult to read, let alone report on, figures or numbers that need to be interpreted and of course that need to be explained and reported on all of these things make many students avoid the use of spaces on these grounds however there are good reasons for beginning uh, quantitative researchers to assuage these fears. In this introductory video, we will focus on the following points. We will define SPSS very briefly, and of course, we will move on to the discussion of the uses that can be made of SPSS and who can use SPSS, and we will try to handle the question as to whether we need to be experts in the field of statistics to be able to use SPSS successfully. Finally, of course, we will introduce the software and its main components in preparation, of course, for our next videos. Now let's start with the first question, what is SPSS? SPSS is an acronym for Statistical Package for Social Sciences, which means that it can be used in a variety of contexts, because social sciences includes a number of disciplines. This is a powerful software and a user-friendly software for um, quantitative data analysis. That is to say, data that takes the form of numbers. What precise use can be made of statistics? That's our question. That's question two. SPSS can help us input, organize, and generate data with remarkable ease. Whether we are working on surveys, in experiments, or whether we are dealing with larger data sets. It also helps us run a number of analyses starting from basic ones like uh, central tendency measures, dispersion measures like the mean, the standard deviation, etc. Just to see the basic tendencies of the data, but also helps us run more complex, more advanced measures like comparison measures such as ANOVA, um, ANOVA, t-test with all its versions and also regression and correlations. SPSS also helps us provide visualizations to our data. You know, there are chart builders and you can, you know, customize the charts. So to serve your specific purposes, you can generate graphs such as the histogram, the pie chart, and so on and so forth. Now, who can use SPSS? Only students in applied linguistics? That's a mistake. SPSS can be used by students from a variety of disciplines in the world of academia. It can be used by linguists, by applied linguists, by researchers in educational sciences, but it can also be used by, you know, financial analysts, by healthcare specialists, by specialists in psychology, sociology, geography, and so on and so forth. Wherever there are hypotheses that are quantitative in nature, you know, the uh, researcher can make use of SPSS as a user-friendly software. <music> Do I need to be an expert in statistics to be able to use SPSS? The answer is straightforwardly no. We do not need to be experts in statistics in order to be able to successfully use SPSS. However, some basic knowledge is presupposed. Why we will not be, why the user of SPSS will not be forced to uh, look for a calculator and start dealing with complex operations, complex formulae uh, to find a certain figure number like a probability level. SPSS does that in a fraction of a second. However, uh, we should not. Uh, uh, deny the fact that we need to be familiar with these concepts, the logic behind these concepts. So if we could be able to, uh, to understand the logic behind a given operation, a given move in statistics, a given formula, then of course we will be able to make some meaning out of all these operations on SPSS. And with these basic pieces of information in mind, let's now move on to a display of uh, SPSS and its basic components. <music> So as you can see on the screen, you know, once you install SPSS, you know, whether you have a trial version or you buy a subscription. So once you install the software, you have, will have that icon that you can see on the uh, screen. 
You click on it the way you click on a Word, for example, file or rest or Excel file, a page is opened. Of course, you know, you have this type of layout as you can see there. Of course, if you want to, to enter data for the first time, then you have to click on that, uh, you know, uh, small window that opens just to have this, to end up with the, the main page, uh, the main SPSS page. And so you can swap between two pages. You have this one here called data view and the other one is referred to as variable view. Now, for the variable view, that's the first step, of course. The researcher has to go to variable view. Why? It's because it's there in this on this page that we have to specify our variables. We have to give them uh, the, the, the name names. For example, gender, you know, is a variable, so we have to call it gender. We will come to the details of this in our immediate next video, of course. And then you have to specify what type of variable it is and whether there are levels or not, all these details. In other words, here you specify the variable as well as the necessary corresponding information. The numbers that you have there are numbers that represent variables. For example, if you have 10, when you reach 10, you may, it means that you have 10 variables. But the number of variables is theoretically infinite. You can go theoretically up to thousands of billions of, of variables, but there is no piece of research practically that can reach this number. So you can enter the variables that you have, you may have five, six, seven, I don't know. Okay, so you enter them here, each, of course, with its specifications. Of course, we will come to these details, as said, in due course. And once we have done that, we move on to the data view. The horizontal uh, rows are for variables, and the vertical numbers that you have there are for the cases. For example, students. Students, for example, you have gender variable, and then you have student one, student two, student three, student two. For if student one is a male, then you write number one or number two or in any other number just to specify that the student question is a male or number two to specify that the student question is a female and, and so forth. So we fill in with the data that we have obtained from our respondents. Anyway, I hope I have been able to introduce SPSS in this first session in general terms. Of course, our next videos will be on how to enter variables and how to specify them. Stay tuned and share the contents of this video. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.